Yeah, so this is my, my mom, um, is, when she, she graduated in, I think, 76, and they immediately started the frame makers um, with, with her parents. So my, my, my parents and, and grandparents started it together. Um, and it was, I came around in a couple of years after it started. So um, it's always kind of been there. It was in Sugar House for, for about 20 years. I think there was two locations there. The, the last location was really kind of a little bit run down. It was, um, it was just a month to month lease. And you know, it, it was just kind of doing its thing. And, and when we moved it to, to Holiday, um, they, they tore down the block that it, where the building was. And so we, that forced that move. And we've been in a, a great space ever since. So we've been in our current location since um, 97. So I think we opened at the beginning of 98. Um, so, like Rob said, um, you know, my, my grandmother was an artist. Um, my mother graduated with an art degree. She did printmaking for a, for quite a few years, and then I followed and went into. I got a bachelor's of fine arts at the University of Utah, painting and drawing. Um, and I don't do it enough, so I need to. <laughs> the shop keeps me really busy, and my kids. You have a place to show it. I do, yeah, which is really <laughs> bad that I'm, I'm not, not showing, showing more, yeah. Um, but framing, it's, it's something, like even back in, in college, I think looking back at it, I did the painting drawing. My favorite classes were probably the, the three D classes we had to take our first year. Um, so maybe, maybe I should have had a different emphasis, I don't know. But um, I, I've always really liked to build, to build things, and, um, and and I have just been surrounded by art. Um, my my parents and grandparents and aunt and uncles they all started a company together um, with portfolio graphics. That was kind of the main the main their main thing as I was growing up. Um, so it was a, a print company. They published fine art prints and, and greeting cards and, and that type of thing. That industry drastically changed that it started to change in the late 90s um, and they, they sold to New York Graphics which was based in Connecticut and they uh, closed a few years ago so they're, they're not even around anymore but um, so it, it's it's been a you know I've just I've been surrounded by art my entire life and, and I I think it's the weirdest thing to go into somebody's house and not see any art on the walls. So I, I'm glad that I'm glad that you're all doing doing art because we need we need more of it. So I'm, I'm gonna um, let me open up a little bit here. So we're getting ready. This is a, a this is an old article in the Tribune from. 1982. So this was, this is my aunt Jill there on the left. She's she's an artist. Same year too. I went there. Um, okay. Yeah. What was and your last so, name? Her name's Jill Barton. Barton. Yeah. But, um, and, and here's what you were referring to, the, the do-it-yourself area, it looks like. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's changed a little bit. We finally decided that we were doing more work and charging less for the people who were doing it themselves than <laughs> since we were you know ended up doing it you know often so it was nice while it lasted <laughs> yeah I wasn't really around I mean we did that a little bit in, in when we moved to holiday um, it, it kind of just fizzled, fizzled out so I, I wasn't really around it that much so I, I don't know how This is um, just a few pictures of the inside of our of the store. You, you host the uh, holiday plein air. Yeah, so we, don't you? Yeah, so we do. Uh, yeah. It's hard to bring that in. Okay, let me. I'll put. Just hold this. That will probably be better. Is that better? Okay. Um, yeah, so we do, we do the holiday plein air with the, the Holiday Arts Council. I, 
we were thinking about starting it and um, I approached somebody on the, on the Arts Council and, and found out that they were essentially had the same thoughts and were looking into starting one too. So we just joined forces and have done that four or five years now. And so it's, it's, been, a, it's been a really fun, fun thing to, and to see all the artists out around it for a couple of weeks painting is, is, is fun. You've seen my kids, like, and here, I'll show you a picture of this. But, and there's my wife, too. <laughs> the little one there is now three years old, so that was a few years ago. So five boys and one girl. <laughs> and my, my kids, my wife and I are just could not play, as a, we're not musical at all. And all of our, our kids are just extremely musical and um, play the, my daughter plays the violin. I mean, she's just it's in her hands more often than it's not. Um, my son's doing, a few of my boys are doing piano, and one of them's also doing the cello. And it's just been really, really fun. It's, it's, I love to see the creative side come out. Um, and I think that's one of the, the best things about being a parent, is just watching them grow and develop talents. And, and hopefully they'll get into art a little bit too. I, I probably need to head that up a little bit more than I, than I do. Yeah. Yeah, some, someday. <laughs> that, that, you know, that'll be a, a fun thing. Um, I thought I would just start with, and, and I really do want to make this a discussion. I don't want to just sit here and talk the whole time. So please ask questions. I don't know how much. I just thought I would, would kind of go over just some, some framing. Um, I'll show you our equipment. I'll show you some. I brought a few frame samples here. Kind of go over some basics there, and then we'll, I also brought just a, a bunch of pictures of just various things we've framed over, over the last few years, and we can kind of just look at the frame design and discuss that, and um, just see, see see how the conversation goes. So this is. Um, Start with our shop area. I'll just kind of show you the equipment really quick here. Um, th this is the saw that gets used all the time. There's there's two. I should have opened this up. There's actually two blades in there. It's a pneumatic thing, so you you can control the blade with your with your foot. Two 14 inch blades that are just stationary, so they're they're always 45 degree angle, and so. Um, hit a pedal with your foot and the, the blade left or right will come down and cut your molding. This machine here, we have another one back towards the, the on the opposite corner of this, this table. Um, these are um, V-nail machines, so they, they put the nail up underneath so you don't see any nails coming through the sides like they used to do. So, these are, these are all covered with Velcro, so they're covered with the nail, but if you ever look on the corner of a, of a frame, you'll see a little V-shaped nail. And so this is the, the machine that will put, puts those nails up there. There's various size nails you can put in, and you can stack them if you need to go deep. Um, this is a saw that we use to cut our metal frames, like the aluminum frames. Just, here's just a chop saw, so if we ever do need to change the angle, we can, we can do that. Um, this machine is, is, a, is a Hoffman, which puts little, little dovetail. It wraps a little a channel for, for one of these to go. And so, to, to, so you put this up in there and it's a cinch it tight. And the nice thing about this is you can do really tall, skinny moldings. <coughs> And not worry about the nails can be a little bit temperamental. They can hit the wood grain um, and, and maybe start curving, and you can blow out the side of your frame. Which, is, but with these ones, because it, it's a router that's cutting a, a channel in the back of the frame, it just keeps it really nice and straight. 
you do have to cut really straight because once this is in there, it's, you can't, there's no get at all. So there's a couple sizes of this, this one and there's a few of these really small ones here. This is a frame that was has one of these in there and then of course we trim that off. But um, you can see kind of, in, 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 I, here, let me pass that around. <laughs> This is also pneumatic, so you just push a, a pedal and it, it, it engages it. This is our table saw, which so we often will use it for all, all the time. I mean, sometimes you just need to cover a little bit more of a painting or something, so you know we'll cut down a little bit more of the frame or, or cut panels for, for artists or for just, you know, various. This saw is actually kind of cool. It, it, it senses flesh. So if you touch it and it's on, it immediately jams a break into the, into the saw blade. And um, it so stops the blade and it drops down into the table at the same time. So you're not cutting off arms. So you're not cutting off fingers. And I, I know several people who have cut fingers off with the table saw. So that this, I made sure I got this. The, the problem with it, though, is that it senses anything that's conductive. So I found out really quickly, if I put a frame through there with a bunch of metal leaf on it, <laughs> it's, a, it's gonna stop the saw, and, and it's, you know, it's kind of expensive to buy a new break and you know get a new blade and all that, so. These blades are a little cheaper. Our main saw, I think the blades are about $250 a piece or something like that. Um, our mat cutting. So we have this. This is our our second computerized mat cutter. We, we've um, this is we have had for about two years now. Um, the nice thing about mat cutters is obviously it's very um, saves us a lot of time, especially if there's a lot multiple openings. But um, you can also do kind of other fun things like it doesn't have to be just a rectangle. <laughs> so you can you can cut out all sorts of things. Um, right, this this area here is was actually a, a pen, which you can put in there and, and write on the board too. So it's kind of fun. So it's basically just a plotter, depending on whether you're using a pen or a blade. A pen or a blade, or yeah. Or even this one. This is gonna be a little hard to see, so you can take kind of take a look at it after, or I may be able to pass it around. But you can emboss into to the surface too. So this one, you'll see my name at the bottom, and, and just a little line going around the opening. So I did a little video of this. We were cutting actually just with some cardboard. I think some cardboard just to make some corners for the for frame that was going to be shipped. So a very precise. Um, we get really great corners. We don't have to worry about overcuts and and all of that. I, I expect these pieces of equipment are pretty expensive though. They are, yeah. I think the, the nice thing is they haven't changed. I think the one we bought 20 plus years ago was $24,000, and this one was maybe 20, I got it on sale for maybe 23,000. <laughs> so, and it does a lot more than the, the original, which is. They do a they, they do. If you take care of them, they'll last. What's it cutting out? So that, that was, we were cutting just some cardboard corners. So that there was a pop out and you could fold them up and put it around the, the corners of the frames. There is, um, we mount 
mount a lot of pieces to foam board. And so th this is a heat roller press. And so if you have a really large piece, I, I think that these boards come four feet by eight feet so we can run you know, some quite large pieces through it. Um, this particular board has a, a little slip sheet on that's on there, and if you peel that off, there's an there's an adhesive on the board, and it, which is activated with heat. And so as it runs through that press, it'll activate it. Um, this one we use if we if it's really large and, and doesn't fit in this other press, but um, we typically use this, which is a vacuum press, which also heats up. It just isn't quite as big. I mean, you can't fit a whole four foot by eight foot piece through this, of course, but um, the nice thing about the, the heat press is it, is it pulls all the air out, so it sucks it down, and you get a lot of pressure, and then the heat activates the adhesive too. So these boards come, we used to use a spray mount process, and you'd get a can and spray it, and you don't want to be breathing the stuff, of course, and <laughs> it's messy, and, and the stuff tends to fail over time, or at least along the edges. If, if, if something doesn't get into a frame, it's gonna start peeling up, and so. <laughs> so these boards are just are very permanent, which is, is really great. Um, but we do also have other boards that are more archival, that. That are re reversible, so you can heat them back up a little bit, and they'll, the arc will come back off. So depending what it is, we could. Uh, so can't you uh, mount like a, a, a canvas on that? So yes, and we often mount canvas to it. Um, it obviously depends. We're not going to do like a really expensive original, but it, but, but there's lots of vacation art or uh, just pieces that. that really don't, people don't care about as much. And, 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 that, and the nice thing about this is they're really flat. So if you have something stretched around the stretch bar, it might be sticking out of the, the frame. Yeah. If this is gonna fit into your frame. So it's a, it's a good way to do it. And a, and a lot of canvases already come pretty, you know, glued down to a board anyway. So it's really not too different there. Yeah, come there. Have you considered uh, manufacturing linen panels that you could paint on? Hmm. Yeah, we we could do it. I mean, I it actually like you could do that. Yeah, I mean, and we we do keep it in stock, so we have I do have prime linen in, in the store right now, and we can stretch it onto you know stretch a bar piece it or or a piece of foam board. We could do that too. Yeah. So um, I think that called it. The linen I have, it's, it's gotta be seven feet tall, and this is yeah. however long it is, so we can pretty much get any size that you need. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's most of the equipment. Oh, we also um, do printing, so it's just a picture of our printers. This, this one on the on the left is, it's a couple years old now, it's, it's the newest generation. The one to the right there is maybe I don't know, 10 years old or something, but um, yeah, so we, we do G clay printing. We, we print on canvas, of course, um, hot press paper, cold press paper, just photo paper. Or, I mean, we could even, we've even run map board through it. And, you know, we print on quite a few things. Do you yeah. have a price list for, for uh, printing? I don't. <laughs> that that, that would have been smart. but. Um, for me to bring, but, but we do do it, and, and if you call us, we could give you an exact quote for whatever size you need, or if you, or if you stop doing it. I just don't have it with me. <laughs> so, oops. All right, so these are just some framing examples, some things we've done. Um, thought we could just kind of go through them, um, and I'll just kind of tell you why we why we used what we did, and um, and maybe even before I do that, I'm going to just show you the, the, these samples that I brought. This company, um, the, the, the picture was, and they 
this particular one, which is obviously pretty deep, so we do you know shadow box with it. Um, it they give us the option of having a little channel at the bottom here, and so you can get another piece and stack it if you really need to go really deep. So the limits. We're a little limited of what frames we have to, that can do a shadow box, but at least this company gives us, I mean, we can really go quite deep with it, which is nice. We do a, do a course liners. Um, here's a, a liner. This is just primed, but it, we would pick a fabric, and which would get stretched over it. So you hundreds of different fabrics to choose from. This has a traditional just little lip on there to cover the, the edge of the artwork. It also comes just flat, so you can use this almost like you would like a, a map board. So it can, um, and, and of course there's different options in the corner where it comes together. We can just have it seamless, um, or if it's a really big piece, sometimes what we'll do is just wrap it in into it, kind of like a, kind of like a, a couch would, you know, the fabric would be kind of just tucked in together. And so that way it won't ever start to fray or anything over time. So how do you mount the fabric on those? It's just in a, 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 a glue, essentially, that just gets, yeah. Applied. Applied and, and, and pulled over it. And no it, special tricks. Nothing too special, but just, you just want to keep it nice and straight. So you just have to be careful. There are, um, we order from the co company that makes these, we, we get some glue. They have a couple versions. One is completely archival, um, at, at least acid-free wise. I mean, it is glue, so you, you wouldn't want to put it on anything, but in this case, it would, it would be a completely, but, it, but really, I mean, either version they have, the one when it's wet might have a little acid in it, but as soon as it dries, it's not going anywhere. So, so it really, the, there's not like a really big difference between the, the couple options they give us. That is something though, like a wood frame is, um, I'm glad you brought that up because I mean, wood naturally has acids and lignans in it, um, which can, can be, you know, of course bad for, for the framing package and for your artwork. Um, so if it's something that's, Really valuable. We can line the, the wood with it. It's a, a tape that has a, a metal coating on one side, which is, is designed to just block any any contaminants from that wood from coming into the, the frame package. Um, you can paint like it's just a little messier, but you can paint um, different sealers on there too that can can also block um, block the acids from coming. Um, there's there's a, a tape that you can get that you put just under the, the lip of the frame that it will help keep the painting from sticking to the frame. Sometimes you'll pull off an old frame and, and, it, and the paint is, is stuck to it. So um, there's lots of options, you know, if, if, if needed. Most of the time we're just going to put the frame right on the painting and it's not going to be a big issue, but if it's a really valuable piece or, or a piece that we're afraid that stick, then, then we do have that option. Um, so what's the name of the fabric mat thing? It's a, a liner. Liner? Uh, yeah, a fabric liner. There's also just these little fillets, which are, you know, kind of used in a similar way. You put it on the inside of a Usually a map board has a little bevel to it. If it has a fill, we're gonna do a reverse bevel so it will kind of just fit nicely over that, over the, the, the edge there. Yeah, the two. There you go. This style and like the one that pats around is a float frame. So you'll see, you know, the, the, the painting kind of 
sits in there, it looks like it's kind of floating, so that's where it, it gets the name. Usually it will leave a little gap, but typically just an eighth of an inch to three sixteenths of an inch. Sometimes people want a larger, and we can of course you know, make it a, a wider gap. Um, but we've kind of found over the years that that seems to be a really good spot that looks good on most pieces. How does the frame attach to the painting then? You have to attach it from the back or what? Yeah, so this one it would be attached to the back. And there's various ways we do it. Um, sometimes we'll have to, to build a, a strainer. We'll get some wood and build it essentially as another frame that will go between between the painting and the back of the frame, just so we can raise that, that frame up. Sometimes there's just little metal clips that we can screw in, depending on if, if, if there's just lots of factors, you know, that it, um, sometimes it will just be a, a screw, so right? If there's a stretch canvas on wood, you could perhaps just screw it in from the back. Exactly, yeah. So I, I asked my employees, I said before I came over, I said, this, this is what I'm doing. Um, and every one of them said, make sure you tell all the artists to paint on square canvases. <laughs> we, we go to put them in, in these, and if it's off square, then we have to, un un we have to take the canvas off and off and build a new stretcher bar and restretch it. And so that was the first thing I thought everybody's done. Make sure the canvases are square. And also paint the sides of the canvases. You never know if it's going to go in this frame or this frame. So if it's, um, we often do paint the sides of the canvases all the time, you know, so they so they it will look better in, in the frame. The church actually yeah. do that, though, don't they? We, we do, yeah. So I paint on panels a lot, and I like them in a floater frame, but I find it's hard to find a floater. How do you attach a panel to like a quarter inch panel? Yeah. So uh, we'll build it again a strainer, and so it's just a, a, a strainer. It's essentially a stretcher bar. It just doesn't have the little lip. And then glue it, or? And then and we'll glue it to the back. Yeah. And if you want to take that off later, you can just glue it to the back. We, we we're careful where we put our nails, so if we need to cut it off, we can cut it off. Um, it's there's been times we used to use Velcro. So it'd be re removable. Uh, the problem is, is people would pull out the one side. The, the, you could reinforce the velcro, putting a staple through it into into the bar, the strainer. The other side, of course, is maybe not thick enough to be putting staples through fittings. So um, we just found that sometimes it, velcro fell because of maybe it was in a, the heat. Maybe it got really hot, for example. And, Or people would pull them off and then they would kind of put it back on and then sometimes they'd, they'd shift. So we um, kind of got to the point where we just glue them now, but we, we can always cut them off if needed. So we do it often though, so I mean it is something very doable. So if you do have a, a panel, a painting on a panel, we can definitely get it into a floater frame. is there's several options um, what we find that we use the most of nowadays is, is museum glass which is has really great clarity it blocks 99% of the UV and it's expensive so <laughs> it's they, they don't have enough competition I, I met I, I was on a, a business trip several years ago we went to uh, to the to a beach house with a bunch of framers from all over the guy in California um, invited me and I went out there a couple times. Last year, I, my wife and kids all got COVID like a couple days before I was supposed to leave and so that I, I didn't end up going. But um, but it, it did go a couple times and I mean, I met, met the, the second year, I met the, a guy who had formed a, a glass company. He was, he was, gosh, I'm trying to remember where he's even from. He was from some other country, I don't remember. He, he moved to the U.S., went to, to college, ended up moving to, I want to say Latvia, met somebody, got married, stayed there. Um, but he started started a, a, a company that, um, that only, I think he told me they only have about 3% market share in the U.S. And so 
they're trying to get it in the U.S. And, and we don't have as many options to get their product here in Salt Lake as maybe some other cities do. We do use a little bit of it, but um, I would love the main TrueView who, who owns this company. The, the, most of us that we use is TrueView, and it's, I would just love for them to have more competition because <laughs> they, they, you, they you charge like too much. Do you like art class? The art class, yes, and that's the, the company that um, that, he did? that they started. And so, really great guy who's very smart. Um, is has come out with some great products, and, and I'm really hoping he can get a, a bigger foothold in the in the U.S. Um, that the, so the glass. I mean, the museum glass has, like I said, and, and the, this other company, the art glass. He actually, it's called Grow. The company name is actually called Grow Glass, and they started making glass for for um, oh gosh, what I can't remember. For, for yes, to grow plants, you know. To, and so, and then they they shifted. I don't know. Maybe they do both. I'm not sure, but um, they've got into the picture framing glass, and but they're, they're very very similar. So they both block 99% of the UV. They both have versions that are very clear that block the UV. They have a, another. This one here on the what side is it on here? Your left um, has still blocks the UV, but it just looks like regular glass. You get a lot of reflection with it. Of course, there is just regular glass. It naturally blocks some UV, maybe like 45%. Um, there's other glass that doesn't block the UV, but has the great clarity. It's it's the, the price point though is so high. We just figured you might as well just put the good. Museum glass on there that's also going to block the, the UV by the time you get into to that. So it, it does make a really big difference. I have some, you know, different types of glass in my house, and every time I look at the ones that don't have museum glass on it, I just think to myself, it's time to change that out because <laughs> it, it just looks so much better. But um, but it is it is expensive, so it's it makes it hard for artists who are trying to of course sell your work and. Make a profit. So, um, would you say it's maybe double the price, or I mean, it's, it's it right around double. Yeah, yeah. It, it probably a little under double now. It used to be closer to double. But they they keep kind of upping the price on the other glass options that the, the museums have kind of held steady. They're, they also make an acrylic that is very similar. Um, this and pass this around too. This. This has little pieces of styrofoam in there because most acrylic will get very staticky, yeah. which will of course attract dust, and it tends to scratch easily. Um, I hate working with it, <laughs> you know. But but there is this one product that they make that they've they've eliminated all all static. Um, they've they've made it so it doesn't scratch easily, and it's really clear. So. This one, um, why don't you just pass this around? And is that double the price too? And that's even more than the glass. <laughs> the, the nice thing about it is we can do really big things. I mean, I think the glass we max out at 48 by 68 inches, which is you know a pretty big piece of glass. Uh, it gets pretty heavy. This is a little lighter, and we can go up much, much larger. Well, in some shows too, especially out of state, and you're having to ship it. They'll require it to be plexiglass as opposed to. Yeah, glass just for safety. Good for shipping. Yeah. Um, even like we we framed silk scarves before, and I I remember walking down into our basement, and we had this piece that we just finished, and we put it in a plastic bag, leaned against the wall, and I looked at it, and it looked like right in the middle of this big scarf that was probably thirty inches by thirty inches, it looked like there was a little round lid underneath the scarf, like we had pulled it tight over this round circle lid <laughs> and it, it was when we put it in the plastic bag it got static which and it had glass on it so glass can hold a charge too and it pulled that glass pulled that that scarf right up against the glass <laughs> yeah is there anything you could do to scratch a piece of glass is there a product that buffs it out or if you just glue the glass I, you know that there are um glass companies I don't know how, how you don't know what I don't know how they do it. I, I'm sure they've all some water and some I'm not 
I'm not exactly sure. There is a product that we can use for light scratches yeah. on, on acrylic, but not, not, it doesn't work with glass. Yeah, and, and if it's a really deep scratch, I mean, for mirrors, for example, if, if it's a deep scratch, you, you're just not going to be able to do it. If it's a light scratch, they can get hurt. So, but yeah, you just want to go to the glass one thing for that. Um, yeah, so the fact that, yeah, that scarf, I mean, it completely looked like we had a course to open it back up and restretch it, it and get it nice and smooth. This, this Optium acrylic, I, I don't know what they do, but it, no sand, so it's it's really good if you're doing pastels or charcoal or something that could could get hold up. Um, yeah. No, you're good. In your gallery, the part that you sell, what percentage is has glass under it versus non-glass? We have glass is starting to just phase out more and more, and people just want things without glass. Yeah, I mean, we we have people that come in because people don't like glare, right? I mean, it's and that's the great thing about museum glass is that yes, there will be some glare, it's just a lot better. Um, our percentage, I would say we have 90% without glass in there, but most of them are oil paintings. And so that's, we of course have watercolors too, and those almost always have glass. There's a, an artist, Robert McFarland, I don't know if you guys know his work. He varnishes his, his watercolors, and so his, he doesn't put glass on his. So. They, they have a different look. They almost look like they're, they don't really look like watercolor all that much, but you can, if you really look at it, you can tell that, that it is. Map board, um, there's the thickness of most map board is, is called four ply, which is, you know, relatively thin. Um, this one here has a fabric on, on attached to the top. This board is probably a little hard to see, but it's twice as thick. So this is an eight ply board. Um, map board comes in different, different. Um, there's different types of map board. So you have, I mean, the, this one again is just a normal four ply. But there's most most map board is is treated to be become acid free. Um, rag boards is the top tier. They still buffer the boards, even though they are. Rag is made, it's made out of cotton. So cotton is, they say it's naturally acid free, but they still buffer them. So that tells me that there must be traces of acids, <laughs> acid in it or else they, they wouldn't bother to buffer. Um, but, but the rag board, which is made out of cotton, is going to be the highest quality board. Um, there's some boards that even have a, a material in them. It's a powder that they mix into it that will actually take acids, absorb acids, and then the buffer that they put in the board will then neutralize the acids. So, which is kind of, kind of a cool thing. You talk to their competitors and they tell you, nah, it really doesn't work, but they sure tell you it does, so. <laughs> um, but but the, the best boards, regardless, are just the ones that are gonna be cotton, which are, are called a, a rag board. Um, they have others that are made out of alpha cellulose. They treat those boards so they become acid-free. I think over time, they can, that buffering can kind of wear out and they could eventually become acidic again. Um, and then you have, of course, fabric boards, or fabrics, which if I ever read the, the, what's on the back, they always say that the backing board and the core is acid-free, but they never tell me the actual fabric. So they must not be, be completely acid-free, but they're, you know, they, they look good. So. Depends what you're craving and how you want it to look, of course. Um, often we will take, we'll cut little strips of, of map board and mount it. This has a, a piece of foam board that it's been glued to. This has a, a fabric on the on the face of it. So we'll cut these strips to make when we do shadow box frames. So we can run these along the, the inside of the frame to get it some depth and, and just make the sides look so it would sit. So the glass, of course, would be like up between the, the lip of the frame and the top of that, and then 
gives you some space for whatever we can print. So, um, any other question about framing? On the second question on the um, the fabric one, do they do they fade um, the sunlight each of them? Yes. Yeah, so, just like artwork, the fabric or the paper boards that they'll they'll fade um, like anything, right? Go outside for you know a few hours in the summer and see what it does to your the sun does to your skin. It, it's um, light light does damage. <laughs> UV does the most damage, and that's why it's good to block the, the UV. But when it comes down to it, all light does damage. So, of course, you want to display your art and see it, and not just put it in a, you know, in a, in a closet somewhere where it's not going to see light. So, so the best thing is, of course, you can try to block as much UV as you can, and be cautious of where you hang it. If, even if it, even if you have the best glass on there and it's in direct sun, a lot of direct sun, it doesn't block 100% of the UV and it gets visible light too. So it will still fade. And, and heat can also lead to fading as, as well. So you'll want to be, try to avoid sunlight especially. Yeah. You were talking about some tape that you could put on the inside of a wooden frame to protect it. What is the name of that tape? It's, um, gosh, I don't remember offhand. It's just a, a, a I think they call it a seal, sealing tape. Um, it's um, there's a, a company called Lineco that makes a lot of products that are I, I think bookmakers and there's some other industries that use them too. But they have a lot of really great products and they they sell sell that. Any other questions, especially regarding framing? All right, I'll just show you a few examples of what we've some pieces that we framed and um, and if you want to have questions or want to discuss it of course you uh, feel free to I thought I'd start with this one this is just one of those things that <laughs> <laughs> petrified crocodile poop <laughs> and of course the guy wanted to see the back side of it too so we put it on a mirror <laughs> So it was a rock, it was heavy. <laughs> but we frame all sorts of things that we've had all the time. Do you have to wash it so that you know, it doesn't <laughs> So I'll get that one off the street, but it's a little gross. This was something that somebody picked up on a, a vacation um, somewhere in either South or Latin America. Um, frame, I mean, just lots of objects. We're always framing kind of fun, fun things. So this one, we, we had a, mounted it onto a, a, a fabric map board and then just put it into this, this cool frame that has that the really great shape. We actually, if you see those those little four little hooks, I got a plate okay. hanger, and so and just and, and had a, a nice uh, a board behind the mat for it to to screw into. Here, here's a piece that was um, an eleven sided piece of artwork, which eleven. Oh, this is a, a girl that works works for me. Did this in high school. Her father's an interior designer. Um, at some point, I, I remembered her doing this and thought, you know, I think she would be be good here. So we talked. I talked to her dad, and she came in and interviewed, and um, ended up working with her for for several years now. This one, this, there we go. This one, so we, we left a little bit of a, a gap between the frame. And this map board. So the map board is raised in the frame a little bit just to just to set it off a little bit. Cut an opening in the map board, of course, with this photo, and then everything else is, is on top of the, the map board. And then there is glass over over the entire thing. This was a plat piece of plaster. Um, I liked this frame. I mean, just the 
tones were really great with, with the plaster. And then the silver kind of looks like a rolling wave a little bit. And of course, this is, um, you know, the, the disciples pulling the, the, the fish out of the Sea of Galilee there. So they're in the water and felt like that did that piece well. So this is a piece that, that um, we put in a, in a frame, then remounted that frame on top of a map board, and then put another frame around the, the edge. It, it's fun. I, I love to work with customers um, who like to think outside the box a little bit. Because it's so easy just to put the frame just right over it like you, you always see. But there's really a lot of fun things you can do. And, and we like to figure things out. So it's, it gives us a little challenge too. This is a family who does two pictures every year that are just crazy. <laughs> and she came in, this is, was quite large. Um, I'm trying to remember how big it is, but it, it was something like about 40 by 60 or something inches. So we, it was printed on metal and we don't, we don't print on metal, but we do. We work with a wholesale that, that does it for us. So we do supply that sometimes. Um, we floated this in a frame. It, this frame was is not built to be a floater, but, but we created it, made the same look, stacked it with something so we could, we could float this in there. This family does just these photos every year. And she, she said on this one, they, they were, of course, all in silver. Get out to the Great Salt Lake. She said there was a, a group of tourists out there, and of course they gathered around and started snapping pictures of them. <laughs> they ran out into the water once they got away, and the photographer snapped one shot, and they got it, and the sun went down. <laughs> and then she said they drove out to Wendover, rented a, a hotel room, snuck in, showered off, and then left. <laughs> I have no idea what kind of paint. <laughs> just pure silver. It was, you know, there's a, just a little close up. You can kind of see the edge there and how it's floated in, in the frame. So, this is this frame is, is two frames. So, you have the, this with the frame with the, the little ornate frame on the inside, and then two map boards that have been cut to go around. thought this was really cute. This was a coat that went through all their kids. So they, if, if you look at it, each of these pictures, is, is it looks like there's five boys there and they, they have five, five of these little frames that are inside the large frame around the coat. And they all have the, that coat on. It says, yellow coat, a child's life is like a hand, hand-me-down coat on which every boy leaves his mark. I think he, the, the father had this frame to give it to his, to the mother. This is, of course, a replica painting. Somebody copied of, of this. Um, I remember the, the, the something finch, of course, the gold, the gold finch. I thought this frame was really great. Again, another folk frame. But it, I just love the tones and the colors with that with that painting. Ben, is that a panel then, or is that a canvas? I think that's a panel. Yeah, you can, if you kind of zoom in here, you can yeah. kind of see the. And of course, when we when we build up the back, sometimes we'll make it very flush on the side. Sometimes we'll bump it in a little bit, depending what what the look we're going for. So sometimes it looks like it's floating a little bit more than. And just being sad so and nice. Yeah. So, did you custom finish that wood yeah. on the frame? Yeah. It's uh, this is a frame. Um, we didn't. We didn't. Uh, it, this is the way it comes. It's a Bella Molding makes this one, and it's a. They have some really, really great frames. It looks like something sharp, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> really. She framed in drawers. Yes. Yeah. She. She does the plein air bed every year, and it, 
every year she at least has one or two drawers. Yeah. This is a, a flag, um, kind of an interesting history. This, we actually just, the, the owner of the flag actually just recently called us. I don't know if it ended up being displayed, but somebody wanted to display it for the All-Star Weekend that just happened. So, but they were trying to get it um, authenticated. So I went over to his house and kind of had to take part of it apart so we could reveal. They wanted to see the actual the back side of the rivets. And so we took a bunch of pictures and we sent them off. Um, but this, this flag, it was, it was somebody that I went to junior high with was on a trip in 1992 and I think it was Barcelona, Spain for the Olympics with his family and he, they saw somebody selling some flags, bought a bunch of different flags. He chose the US flag and uh, during a basketball, I, I, it must have been a different basketball game, but um, somebody came up and said, hey, can we borrow your flag? Michael Jordan needs, needs to borrow it. And so Michael Jordan borrowed their flag. He, he needed to cover up the Reebok logo on the Olympic uniform because he was sponsored by Nike. So he draped, draped the flag over his, over his shoulder. There's pictures of him out there with the Dream Team and he has this on there. And, and then he got all the two signatures, so all the coaches and all the, the players signed it and from the Dream Team and, and they mailed it, mailed it back to, to this boy. Um, he then, Somehow the family got in contact with, I don't remember what player it was, another player. So when he came into town to play the jazz, they, they arranged to get it signed. The other signature that he was missing was John Stockton, which is, was, he was known to just not, not sign. So he, you know, John Stockton lived there over there in Holiday and he just went over and knocked on his door and he said, get away, you know, <laughs> go. So it still didn't get signed. And, and, from what I understand, I think somebody, some of, some of the mothers, some of the mothers in the neighborhood talked to John's wife and got it signed. <laughs> but this one, they, they came in and, um, you know, it, it was it was framed. He just didn't like the, the way it was framed. And so he, they brought it to us and said, just kind of told us kind of roughly how they wanted it, and this is what we came up with. But we, we put it on a, a, a rag board, so this, this white kind of cream, cream color is, is a, a rag board. And then we put this, actually, I wasn't planning this, but this was the frame that went around, around that. And then that was screwed down to another large panel that had a, a fabric wrapped around it. And then an acrylic box that was made out of that optium material was was then attached to the, to the box. So there's a, a side view there. Here's a piece. I, in general, I don't like doing these where you see through the, you know, having no map board. I think there's just, I like things to look really good on any wall and if you put this on various walls, it's just not going to look good because of the, the color of the paint, but um, this was a newspaper from, I'm trying to remember, 1770. So he wanted to be able to read the back, so we, so we framed it this, this way. It was, it was really interesting. I mean, there was like, somebody was advertising their services of being Work, working, if I remember right, working, doing yard work or something, and they mentioned somebody that they did yard work for, which was, I don't remember you know, who it was, but it was somebody that everybody's heard of. <laughs> Is that sandwiched between glass? Yeah, you know, I was trying to remember if either glass or maybe maybe even used an acrylic but I, I'm not I don't quite remember acrylic would have been the better choice um, just Why? because one of the benefits of acrylic is it also doesn't have the same temperature change so in order to be considered conservation this wouldn't be conservation because it's just right on the glass but but acrylic doesn't um, change temperature as much Luckily here in Utah, we don't 
we live in such a dry area, and most people have air conditioning units, um, you might have to be a little more careful if you have a swamp cooler. But it's, it's so dry here, we don't really run into the problems as much of, of artwork or photos sticking to glass. Photography is very often, I mean, if you ever film something that comes out of an inkjet printer, it's a little tacky, you know, so that, that will often stick to glass. And so to be considered completely archival, you would actually use at least eight ply worth of map work. Uh, and, and, and if you're not using map work, you, you can use a little spacer that would run, or run around the edge to kind of keep the glass off of the, off of the piece. So um, it's, luckily Utah, we don't have to worry about it as much. Of course, we're gonna be cautious and do what we can, but some places in the country, you would never frame something without <laughs> you know, with, with, with the glass touching it. But yeah. Even if you like, if you don't. Know, uh, it's your whiskers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, you have to be a little cautious too. If you pick up your crane job and it's in the summer and it's out in a baking hot car all day, you know, you could, you could cause some issues. Um, even one thing about acrylic though that is not an issue with glass is acrylic will expand and contract but it just doesn't have the same temperature fluctuation. So sometimes with the temperature fluctuation, you'll get condensation on the inside of the glass, and then you can, you know, it can leave marks from the water and of course do damage. Um, this, yeah, this is just another example, just a shadow box. So there's two frames here. Well, it's a frame and a fillet. And then of course, sit back into the frame a little bit so, you, so it can fit everything. This is a diploma. Um, this was my, my brother-in-law, who's a dentist. But um, he felt a little gypped. He said, you know, he goes, a lot of my colleagues got the really big diplomas when they graduated, and he had a small one. So he's like, I want to make this thing big. <laughs> so I don't think we went overboard. I think it looks really nice. but. Um, it had, so this one has a, a little map board and then some, a space with a, a fillet with then another map board, both of those are fabric. And then, of course, the, the frame. Just here's something too, he obviously liked bow ties. So, you know, has this, <laughs> probably a gift for one of his children or something. Uh, it was just a fun piece of art here, but they they were wanted to be quite creative when we framed this. So we we took I was in a crowd. We have these uh, uh, frames, some frames that are made out of acrylic, and you can get all sorts of colors. They just paint the back, and they have little patterns, even if you want patterns to kind of show through the the acrylic. But this so this black frame here is a black bow frame. On the inside of that, we put a little a white clear acrylic flow frame, which comes with, when you order these frames in, um, they come with some little holes in them, which are meant so you can screw through the back to, to anchor into what would typically be an oil painting or something. And so we sandwich this piece in between some acrylic and then use those holes and screw the piece down. So he wanted Had to take it to a plastic fabricator to get the nice clean corners cut. We can cut, I just don't have the equipment for that. Yeah, so it was kind of fun piece. This is just a map board but with, with a north or north an ornate frame that we just kind of really felt fit the piece. I mean, you look at these little spots in that building, it just felt like it felt, it just feels good with it, right? I mean, it just, the colors were nice. It had a little touch of greens and reds in here. And 
this house as you see the greens and reds and, and just felt like the, the era. I'm not sure of the date on this one. 1893. 1893, yeah. I don't know if any of you have done the, the plate show. Um, they always have two little holes at the top of the piece. So when people bring those into us, which we frame every year, it, it, some we often have to like rot out the frame a little bit if somebody doesn't want those holes to, to show. <laughs> so we'll cover them. Um, this one, they he wanted them all framed in, in the same frame. So we, we did a, a, another flow frame here, raised each of these up so they were just individually floating inside this frame, and then we just got some gold screws and just to, the screws weren't doing anything structural, it was just to kind of fill those holes. This is, uh, yes, that actually, yeah, that's the one, the one we had on that newspaper. There's some other colors, I think this one has a little bit different colors in it, but, um, you know, this, this piece, I think it was just kind of fun that the customer wanted to leave the, make it look like it was a sketchbook because it came out of a sketchbook so we you know we didn't cover up the the little tabs this mat is is reversed a reverse bevel so you don't have the the little white bevel that you typically have on the on the mat board oh, there's a we already showed this one there's a front Sure, or maybe, okay. This guy comes in every so often, he lives out in Nevada, if I remember right, and um, does these pieces with little jewels and stuff in there. But he kind of just likes things to be over the top a little bit. And, but, um, <laughs> he does these for people who, you know, but, it, but it, you know, I, I think it was kind of fun how it turned out. It, this is, is a mat board that is, it, it actually, there's a line of mat boards that are extremely, they're just expensive. And and they'll, they hand, they hand do them. There's, there is a little dimension to it. That, that is an Egyptian goddess. Yeah, yeah. And so we, we have this, this mat board surrounding the, the R piece um, with a little fillet and then another mat board, which is like a, kind of a pretty, um, almost rice paper surface with, with that fillet in the frame. So the brown behind the artwork, is that part of the artwork or is that for one of your... your uh, that is, is a mat board. Board. So that board. It looks like it looks wood. Like yeah, just right outside of that, the blue area, so that's a, a map board. So this was, a, it really doesn't show up here very well, but we had a nice, kind of almost maroon color that was down underneath this. Um, this was not a flow frame, but we treated it kind of like a flow frame to see what lose the the edge of that piece that we just kind of had it. We didn't want to cover it. You know, it was just too good to cover. Is that a, a print or is that a, an actual icon? An uh, icon. I don't know any, like, the history on it or anything. Somebody got it on a vacation somewhere. This was just a really small little painting. I mean, it was almost business card size. <laughs> Maybe a little bit bigger, but, but tiny. So this one, we, we floated that on top of a, of a map board, surrounded the map board with a, a fillet and continued that same map board and then put it into that frame. So it, it gave it a little depth and and the, the painting was on a little panel so, so we could then see the... And it was such a small painting, we didn't want to cover any of it up. You know, if a normal frame would cover at least a quarter inch of it. So. This, so you can kind of see the, the side of the panel there. So that was like 
You know, my, my guess is 12 to 14 inches. This is a metal frame um, that oops, we choose a bunch of different colors, and, and they're hand done. So it's um, and this particular frame is actually it's like a T. If you looked at the side profile of it, you'd have a straight piece with a, a little vertical piece on the side. It's just made out of steel, and then they, they paint it. So it's. I think I have a side view, so you can kind of see in there a little bit. Um, I didn't. I don't. I didn't bring a picture of the seeing the outside edge, but it, it was just a really just a flat panel on the front, and drops just straight back on the side. But so, the, but with set in to the frame a little bit. Any guess on the medium for that one? That's really lovely. It kind of looks like maybe acrylic to me. Yeah. <laughs> I thought he was like, <laughs> this, this, uh, a, a girl came in and she had a, all her mother's paintbrushes. And her mother had passed away and she wanted to, to frame one of these for each of her siblings. I wish she had us cut up. I think, I don't remember if she cut them or we cut them, but she wanted the bottom so the paintbrushes all come off just to keep it a little smaller. But I wish she would have just kept them. The full, the full brush, but sometimes we don't get to choose, so. <laughs> Can you go back one second? Yes. Sorry. I didn't get my father in law's paint. And this one, again, is, of course, shadow box again, so you have the, the glass up top with the, the walls that were cut with, similar to this piece that I showed you with the, the fabric. What did you use to mount the paintbrushes on? I think we sewed them on. So there's probably right, there's, I'm sure it won't even show up here, but there's a, a little, just sort of probably around the, the, at where the wood handle goes into the paintbrush. I'm sure that's where we wrapped it, where it's kind of hiding. So this is a stained glass piece. So there's some, this is a stack molding, so you have the, the, the molding on top of another frame that was kind of designed to actually go around the stained glass. Um, and then we, we trimmed off the back of the, the frame so we could have it so you could view it from both sides. Mm. So you can see that seam in the middle where the two frames put it together. So were the in window? I think they were the hooded window. window, yeah. Usually, I mean, most we've framed several pieces over the years. Sometimes, you know, this one they wanted it finished on both sides. Sometimes we'll just paint the. We've done some that had a white frame, and we just paint the white, the back of it white, just so you know if you did see it through the window. Or other times it's maybe a darker frame, and we just paint it even just black, so you don't. If you see it through the window, it's it, you're not going to think about it. And, you know, it's make it look like the shadow versus the raw wood. This inside frame, this is two frames again here, but um, this inside frame is no longer available, which is really sad, it was really great. It had like a little, it looked like, the side profile looked like stairs. So it kind of dropped down in there and then it had this, this outside frame was in this flat surface that curves along the, the, the side of it. Is a, 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 another float frame. The funny thing, I, we really do like, I like float frames a lot. And I actually just framed a piece for myself the other day and I took it home and it did have a float frame. And I looked around my house and realized it was the first float frame that I actually have myself. But, <laughs> but we use them a lot. So I feel like the model with that was like really surprised when I started looking around my house. So I was just like, oh, <laughs> it just feels like I have a bunch because I'm always around. This was a Paralymp Paralympian. A little tedious. <laughs> Are those 
So he was gone. They, they, we cut a little slit and pulled the fat, the pulled each piece through. And I, and I think what I did actually, we cut a, a piece of, with the computerized map cutter, it would just take forever if you didn't have that, but um, with the computerized map cutter, I think I cut a, a map that had a space for each of them, just to kind of give us a template so we knew where to cut our, make our marks and map it all out. It was a lot of work. I mean, yeah. yeah. I'm glad I have employees sometimes. <laughs> this was a, a, a little bag that somebody bought down in Cuba. So we, we mounted that. I'm sure we stitched it down where we could um, to, to a piece of map board, essentially, and framed that and put the, the, the acrylic box around it. We just did this last week. It was, it was a really large rug that was, I don't know, 20 feet by 12 feet or something um, that a, a designer wasn't, just had had for a while and wasn't able, able to place it at home. So they brought it in, we cut it up. One of, one of my employees did the, this some stitched around the edge of it. And I think some of the sites had that. So the, Places that we cut out, so we continued that around it. Um, put a strainer back behind it, and then put it in that that frame. Here's another one. There's there's two of them that we did. So this still has a clamp around the edge that was kind of gluing. This is the one I was just telling you that I framed for for myself the other day. So this artist is Cheryl Thornton. She's a local artist. Um, we've, I've known her for years. You know, she was displaying back when my mom owned, owned the shop, and um, I was talking to her one day and found out that I had taken her daughter to prom. I had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> it's always a small world when <laughs> you start talking to people. But th this is the, the frame that we put it in. So. In, in building it, I mean, I, I cut a little channel off the, the, the side of the frame to, to put these in there. What are those made from? These are just plastic. Ah. They sell, sometimes I wish they were, they were wood because I think the wood would, you could glue it and it would become a really, really strong wood. Glue doesn't really stick to these all that much, um, but it's, but you can get the glue around it. And it's, it just it makes a pretty strong joint, but it would be stronger if it was wood. They make some, but they're larger sizes than these small ones, and, which we don't don't need that size. This painting back behind it is is what was one of my grandmothers. She, yeah, so, so my grandma Donna um, did watercolor for a long time, but probably around, give or take around 2000, she switched to oil. And then hardly ever picked up a, did watercolor after that. She hmm. just kind of dove into oils and did that for a long, for, for 20 years. This was uh, one of our customers, her daughter that lives in, Boston, I think, came out and, and has framed this, but it was just a cool map of Paris. I think her brother had, had given it to her for a gift or something. So we put this in this, just this little frame, and again, put that onto another board that was, would have some fabric wrapped around it, and then attached the acrylic box. So Ben? Yeah. Does your family still own your grandmother's house? Yeah, my grandpa's still there. Okay. Yeah. He's, he's just turned 93 in January. That's such a fun house. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a show place in one way. Yeah, it's a great house. I, I grew up in the house right across the creek. Yeah. So we're oh, neighbors. Right. Yeah. And this is the gray one at the top. <laughs> like the, so those are the Aronis Amons in Paris? They're the, oh. like the neighborhoods? Oh, I think so. 
no, yeah, yeah, the Paris, yeah. The gray one on the top. Oh, that's where you, you're from? No, I, I just went to high school up there. Oh, cool. Nice. Yeah. I th we thought you were saying you live by yeah, it's really sketchy, don't go there. <laughs> okay. People get marked. You survived. Yeah. What number is that? <laughs> uh, 18. 18, okay. Okay. <laughs> this one right here? Like Armenians. Wow. Armenians. What was it called, that district? VCPM. Uh, just numbered, like, uh, oh, okay. Uh, so this piece, we floated this, um, this print on, doesn't really show up, it was not just pure black, it was like, it had a warmth to it, but it was a, a map board, and then we put a little frame around that map board, but and then around that had, a, had a, another map board. Um, and we set that get into the frame so it made it into a shadow box. So we had the little you know, sides coming up and the glass across over the whole thing. I was nervous when they picked this thing up. I was like, oh, cool. Thin, thin little frame on there than a snap, but it didn't. So <laughs> I, I even screwed handles on the back side of it, you know, that were, in case they needed, wanted to, to use those, but I didn't. They just picked it up and hauled it away and it made it safely out to the wall. <laughs> so just a lot. That is a mirror, so it's, I'm assuming everything <laughs> was there, but it's not. <laughs> Could be a painting of a weird tree, like <laughs> with a guy's shoulder. <laughs> with the shoulder, yes, yes. That gives it away right there. There we go. We just did a large job that had a lot of. It, it was going into a medical facility, and they, the ADA rules had had rules of where the actual mirror needed to start above the counter. So we couldn't do a large frame on it. I mean, it had to be just really small. So the frame that they chose was like half inch by maybe maybe an inch. Just the tiniest little thing. And so, you know, we had to like get a bunch of plywood and mastic the mirrors down to the plywood and then attach everything. The, the, the frame ended up being just more cosmetic. Of course, it, did. it was not helping structurally at all. I did a, did a bunch of those and it looked really nice. It was just a little tricky to do. I went to Hawaii, so I, I said, I'm not, I'm not going to be out of town. So I, I did not, yeah, I didn't have to do that. I think that's all the pictures I had. I actually had a couple more, let's see. I emailed myself as I was walking out the door a couple more. Let me see if my phone's connected. Well, I mean, it's almost 8.30. It's, yeah. they were uh, a couple, well, kind of cool frames, but that's, <laughs> but we've, we've seen them several too. Yeah, yeah. There, there's a, another one that I, I was looking for, I just couldn't find the picture of it. Um, and one thing when I, coming here, it made me think, I need to take some before pictures of things we frame, because I, you know, sometimes I'll take pictures of, of something that kind of turns out nice. We don't do that enough, to be honest. I need to do that more. But um, we never take a before picture. I need to start doing that. It's, you, you see it done, you think, oh, I should take a picture of that. You know, it's like, the other frame's long gone, so. Um, but it's, yeah, I mean, and framing, I love framing, I love art. It's, it's just such a, a great, it can be a little stressful, a little hard. The last few years we've had a lot of problems with getting supplies in, like everywhere else, but um, maybe not as bad as some industries, which, were, which is nice. Do you get a lot of your supplies from China? You know, most of the frames that we carry, a lot of them at least come from Italy. Yeah. Um, 
but there are definitely some that come from Asia, and I, I don't know exactly where they're coming from. I'm not sure if it's actually China, though. But some, I, I mean, it likely it's some. It, it, Italy did. Italy does have, a, they have really quality molding. A lot of moldings made in Italy will have, like a, it's, it's called compo, so it's, it's a material that's been around for hundreds of years. It's ground up wood that becomes malleable. You know, they make it almost like a glue. If, if, you, if you heat it up, you can actually mold, like mold it. So if we're putting some corners together, and the, there's a little bit of an ornate, you know, feel to it. So if they're not lining up just perfect, you can actually heat it up a little bit and hmm. improve it, which is to me. And it, and the, the molding coming out of there is is really like environmentally friendly. It's, um, there's a lot of frames that are sold. We don't sell any of the like a, a poly frames that are made of just kind of plastic. Material. The problem with those is they're they don't look as good, first of all. But they they also break. They're very brittle, and when they break, the type of glue you use in them actually fuses the pieces together. So it's it's not just sticking them together. They literally kind of become they melt into each other. So when they break, because they are brittle, it takes chunks of the molding away, and then there's nowhere to put in new mounts. So. Out of all the years we've been doing this, I think I've been able to repair two of these frames. And people bring them in all the time because they just have to buy a new frame. So, and, and I really don't want to be breathing this stuff. You know, when we're, we have vacuum systems and, and try to keep it as clean as we can. Um, but, you know, if you're back cutting a bunch of frames all day, then it's still get a little bit of, I just feel more comfortable with a little wood dust instead of plastic. But, so maybe for the last few minutes, any gallery kinds of questions for Ben? I'm sure he'd be happy to answer those too. Yeah. You know, what's your process if people want to approach you? Yeah, so uh, it's a combination. Sometimes we'll find an artist and reach out to them. Sometimes they come to us and, and introduce themselves. Um, you know, it's, it's one of those things where it's like, yeah, I hate when I'm in the middle of a project and somebody walks through the door and all of a sudden I have to get called away. And it, but at the same time, I mean, if I put myself on the other side of the shoes, if, if you just send me an email, it's just more likely to get lost in the thousands and dozens of emails I get every day. So, you know, it's, I would say just, you just kind of have to be a little bit of a sort of, you know, a, a sort of, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> just you know, go in and introduce yourself and, sh and bring some artwork to show. You know, and and if you need to come back, it, come back at whatever time's good. But um, yeah, that's probably. Are there certain days that are better than others during the week, or certain days are really good? I, you know, I think this. I haven't really thought about it, but I, I think Mondays are always a little busy trying to catch up for whatever's happened on the weekend and, and get going for the week. So I'd say Mondays are probably bad. Middle of the week is, I, is probably the best. Um, I think we get our busiest days with customers are Mondays and Saturdays. So uh, yeah, it'd be wise to probably avoid those days. Um, yeah, any other questions? Talk to us about what kind of art sells well. You know, it's. It really varies. I mean, it's just. I wish I could. I wish I could figure it out. Right? <laughs> it doesn't work. You know. I mean, we, we we have a lot of landscapes. I don't need to have a, as many landscapes as we do. It's just a lot of artists do really great landscapes, and I do like landscapes. I I I, I'm always trying to diversify a little bit more than than we are. Um, and, and we get some really great abstract work in, and, and they it often sells really often pretty quickly too. But it, it does also stand out a little bit more in the gallery because we do have so many landscapes. So it, a lot of interior designers, I, I, we have interior designers that do, do a lot of, there's only abstract and we have others that are only the new landscapes or, you know, so 
a little, a little of everything is nice. I think it's just important to stand out. You know, I mean, a lot of people are very good landscapes, and there's, but there's a lot of them. I mean, if you do something with your art that's just gonna make it pop and stand out and get some attention, then it, it's not gonna just get lost in the mind and all of everybody's. We do. We have. Um, we do a, 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 mostly framing with them, but but um, we have we work with with a lot of interior design. Do they typically bring their clients with them, or usually not? So, usually not. Some do. I mean, some some bring them in, um, and sometimes we have a really. It can be really fun to work with everybody. But then others are. Period. In and out the door really fast. They walk in. This is what I want. Place order. They're out within ten minutes. You know. So it's and then other people. Everybody varies. Some people might be there, especially if they bring somebody. They might be working together for an hour even. 